Hola, mes amigos. Welcome back to Star Game Studios Ability System Hot Bar Tutorial Part 4. In this video, we will tackle the cast bar. The cast bar indicates how long the character takes to enact a particular ability before it is completed. This is a good one. Don't pass this one up. Let's dive in. Okay, first things first. I restarted my project from an earlier version because it really got messed up from experimenting. When I reached this point, I noticed that my hover color was this god-awful neon green. If you open the hotbar slot and click on the cast button, you will see that the hovered style is supposed to be yellow. However, because we wrote code that changed this, the slot's default color when we activated them was green. In the event graph, the ability style variable has a hovered as well. Yes, it's neon green. We can change this here and return to our yellow or whatever color you want. So do that now. Let's make the user interface for the cast bar. Open your UI folder and make a new widget blueprint. Call it cast bar. Open it up and add a size box. Let's override the width by about 400. Change the fill screen to desired on screen. Next, add an overlay to the size box. Inside the overlay, we will add a progress bar. Then add text. For the progress bar, fill it horizontally and vertically. Do the same thing for the text. Scroll the progress bar to see it and change the color to your desired color. I'm gonna make mine green. Center the justification for the text. Let's change the name of the text block to ability name text. Ensure the is variable is checked. We will change this dynamically. Change the name of the progress bar to cast bar as well. It too will be a variable. We can change the name of the size box to cast bar root. Make it a variable also. Open the graph tab and make a new variable. Name it Ability of Type Ability, Object Reference. We will pass the ability details through this variable to get the ability's cast time. Now, we need a function. Click the plus icon to add a new function and name it Start Cast. Make another one and name it Complete Cast. We need one more named Interrupt Cast. Open the start cast function. Grab the ability variable and choose get. Drag off and get the ability details. Split the pin struct to see the details. Get the ability name text and set text. Now get a format text. In the format, we need to type casting left curly bracket, name right curly bracket. We can attach the ability details name to the name.
Next, we can get the cast bar. Set percent to zero because we want it to start at zero percent and end at 100. Then we can set timer by function name. The function name will be complete cast. The time will be the ability details cast time. The return value can be promoted to a variable. Name it cast timer. Compile and save. This will animate the progress bar when we are finished. Let's go to the event graph and use the event tick to control the cast bar. We need the tick because we need it to update every tick or frame. Get the cast timer and we need to figure out the percentage for every frame that has elapsed. So we need the get timer elapsed time by handle. Also, we need the get timer remaining time by handle. The formula for this is to add these two together, which gives us the total time. Then we need a normalize to range. Set it to the range max. The value is the elapsed time. This will normalize the current value to a value between zero and one. If you remember, the progress bar has values between zero and one, so we need this. Now we can get the cast bar and set percentage. We don't want to plug the event tick in just yet because we want it to show only when we are casting an ability. Grab the is visible node and add a branch to it. It only runs this code if the cast bar is visible. We can now add the cast bar to the heads up display. Open the HUD and search for the cast bar. Drag it into the canvas panel. Click size to content. You can center it with the anchor and reset the position X and Y to zero. Set the alignment X to 0.5. You can scroll it up into position where you like it with position Y. Let's code it now. Open the event graph and create a new function. Name the function display cast bar. It will take one input, which is the ability we are casting. Name it selected ability of type ability object reference. Get the cast bar and a set visibility node. We want it to be set to visible. then set ability, and the ability will be the selected ability. If we drag from the cast bar again, we can get the start cast function we made in the cast bar graph. In the Designer tab, click the cast bar, and under the Behavior section, change the visibility to Hidden. This will hide the cast bar until we need it. Play the game to confirm the cast bar isn't visible. Let's activate the cast bar when we click the Ability icon button. We need to open the Ability Actor parent for this. Create a new function and name it Begin Casting. We will design this function to see if the cast bar needs to be cast. If it does, it will be visible in the Heads Up display, and the timer and progress bar animation will run. 
Grab the ability details and split the pin. From the cast time, if it is greater than zero, then get a branch node. If it is true, then activate the cast bar. If false, then just run the ability without a cast bar. We will need to get a reference to the HUD. Go to the event graph and from the event begin play, we need to get game mode. Do a cast to third person game mode and get the HUD reference. Promote it to a variable. In the begin casting function, get the HUD reference and display cast bar. The ability to cast is a reference to itself. So, if the cast is successful, we need a reaction. Go to the cast bar blueprint and add an event dispatcher. Name it cast successful. Now open the complete cast function. When the timer ends and the complete cast is called, it will now call the cast successful dispatcher. This will send the message to any functions that are listening. Go back to Ability. If you double click the display cast bar, we can give it an output. Name it cast bar reference. And the type will be cast bar object reference. Get the cast bar and connect it to the return node. If you go back to Ability, you now see that the cast bar has been added to the Display Cast Bar. We now have access to the Event Dispatcher. From here, we can bind event to cast successful. The event we want to bind it to will be a new function. Create a new function and call it CastAbility. If we don't need the cast bar, we can just drag the event out and connect it to the branch's false pin. For the true branch, we can pull from the event and type event. Choose create event and select the cast ability function. Now it will call the cast ability when the cast is successful. We would like the cast bar to work with the ability icon button. In the event graph, get the begin casting function and connect it up. Now go to the hotbar slot event graph and click on the cast button. Choose the on clicked event in the details panel. This will place the event in the graph. With this, we will spawn an actor. Get the spawn actor from class and use the ability class. The spawn transform will come from the player character. Then get actor transform. Let's see if this works. No. In fact, I get an error. I have an infinite loop. Let's check and see what's going on here. I see. 
You all probably caught it when I did it. I used the wrong function in the false branch. I needed the cast ability function. Let's try it again. Still no cast bar, but no error either. This is because I set the cast time on my melee hit ability to zero. Let's set it up to two seconds. Okay, here goes. It's working. Now, we can make the cast bar disappear when it is finished casting. In the cast bar blueprint, go to complete cast and add the set visibility node. Set this to hidden. That should do it. Let's have a go. Awesome. One thing I forgot to tell you about, you may be having trouble with the button not clicking. This is because the visibility of the cooldown bar needs to be set to not hit testable self only. This will make the mouse ignore the cooldown bar. That's all for this video. In the next video, we will continue working on the hot bar. Until then, may the force be with you. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this valuable and enjoyable. Please like and subscribe to see more upcoming videos in this series as well as other useful content. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror, it appears no friend to me. It's not.